Hi everyone, this is Paula McCoy. Today I'm going to show you how to use your enamels and the layering mix mixed together to do on a ceramic surface. So this is just a ceramic plate that has been glazed with a matte glaze in this case, fired to 06. And now I've applied my pattern and what I've done is put the pattern on tissue paper. I'll show you that. So I applied the pattern to the tissue paper with a pencil. Then I used a fine point Sharpie marker. Okay. Placed it on there and then went around the pattern. Uh, you can see the black lines. So that's a Sharpie permanent marker, ultra fine. You can use a watercolor marker also. The watercolor marker tends to if you happen to put your finger on it, it will smear off. This will hold on. It will burn away in the kiln, so you don't have any problems with that. You will need um, your mixing tool. You need a round brush, like a three or a four round, a liner brush, whatever your favorite liner is. You also need a square shader. The square shader can be a Taclon one, which I have laying here, or it can be a sable one. It just depends on what you want to work with. No matter what you're working with, because of the layering mix, you need to make sure that you uh, rinse your brushes well, keep them clean, because the layering mix will harden over time and can ruin your brushes. We're also going to be using the dotting tools or stylus, and those will be to make the different dots for accent at the end. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so when doing the layering mix, because of the fact it is a, um, it dries hard over time. So instead of putting it in, you know, a pot or a jar to mix it up, I'm going to just, and especially because we're doing brush strokes, I'm going to mix it just on a paper plate. I've got just a um, foam paper plate. Uh, don't use a paper one because that won't work very well for you. So you're going to put out some of the grape. We have quite a few. I would say at least mm, half a teaspoon or so of the grape. We're going to use the grape and the blue. Uh, the grape and the sapphire. Sapphire Grape is uh, G339. Sapphire is G343. Always wipe off your tool before you go into the other color so you don't contaminate, transfer one color to another. Now the blue is just going to be a side load so we don't need as much. Wipe that tool off and then add equal parts of the layering mix. And I'm just going to kind of add it around the edge of my pile and then on top and then start mixing with your tool. The reason we're using the plate instead of, you could put it in a pod, but it's easier to get a brush stroke and to do your brush strokes um, if the surface is, um, if it's easily accessible. Um, when you're trying to get a brush, uh, for instance, a corner load, it's hard to get down inside of a container, so it's always better to put it out on a pallet. And then what I'm going to do is take my liner brush and scoop that off of there. There's quite a bit on the tool. It's hard to get off the tool because of uh, the paper plate. Always rinse or wipe that clean to remove any of that product before you go to your next one. And I'm just going to show you on these two how to mix it and the other ones we won't. Um, I'll just have it ready to go. Okay, so keep that mixed up, smash it, blend it so everything gets mixed thoroughly. Sorry about the noise. And this will be a little bit thicker than those of you that have worked with the enamels. It'll be a little bit thicker than normal just because that layering mix is a thicker product. So once again, I cleaned the tool off so I didn't waste that product. 
okay and so that's about a 50 50 mix layering mix with your enamels okay all right let's get started on these strokes okay so when you're getting ready to paint always dampen your brush in your water and then blot it on a paper towel because you don't want to go in there with a completely dry brush you need to condition it with the water and then you're going to fully load with the purple and I'm working that color into the bristles turning the brush over then with the writing of the brush towards you corner load into the blue corner means about 15 13 15 hairs so a third think of it as a third of the brush okay so corner load and then blend it just a little bit and you can go back and re-corner both of those colors and just kind of blend those together okay then what we're going to do is start with the and I'm going to hold the blue on the left hand side okay start on the outside of the where the petals are get that out of the way and you're going to just press and then slightly turn to come off to a point okay and then once again you want to reload and I don't need to reload the whole brush because I've got blue on one side purple on the other okay so reload corner load with each one keeping that blue to the same side and once again press pull and then come off on the chisel edge and then you're going to continue probably for each flower then you'll have to rinse your brush but you should be able to get each flower done before you rinse so press pull and lift to a point I did um, make sure that before I put my pattern on that I cleaned the piece well and I just used a little bit of white distilled vinegar uh, to clean the piece to make sure there was no residue on there so each time you're going to do this I'm not going to show you every time I'm going to just do it okay blue to the left press pull and come off the chisel edge reload turn your piece press pull and come off to a chisel edge so what we're going to do is do all of these that way like I said you can rinse between flowers if you feel like your brush is okay and you're ready to go go ahead and go on down to the next flower so press pull and come off the chisel edge press pull and come off the chisel edge reload corner in blue corner in purple press pull and come off the chisel edge reload okay so I'm going to continue to do all of the petals like this and I'll be back So once those are done, we'll come back and add a second coat so they'll be a little bit darker. If you want it lighter, then you know you can just go with the one coat. Um, of course, you could always add more things. You could, um, on the back side, you could put design also. So it's up to you in the class. Um, when I'm teaching this, we're just doing one side. Okay, so then, then you'll need to mix up uh, the two greens okay and I'm going to do that and then okay. I'll be back and as you can see this is already starting to dry you can see the damp areas look darker and the other areas look chalky okay 
and I've got my um, teal and my moss green mixed up and ready to go for my leaves. Now, the leaves are done with two strokes. One stroke with the teal and one stroke with the moss green. We'll wait to do the calyx or the ends of the flowers because we want to put another coat on there to darken those since purples tend to be a little more translucent. <coughs> Excuse me. So we'll do just the leaves and then we should uh, be ready to go back to our petals. Okay. Remember we're working from the background forward so the petal is put on and then the little accent and then the dots and then when we do uh, the calyx to the petals to the flower you're going to block in with the moss then put two little comma strokes of the teal on it and then we come back and we accent with the gold sparkle and the dot maker and then you can accent with some purple dots blue dots green whatever your favorite color is and pull in your little stem areas okay all right so let's get our round brush And I'm going to use a number four Kalinsky round. And all of our brushes can be found on our website. And like I said, you're going to do one, let me keep this over here, one color on one side and then go back and do the other colors. So I'm going to do all of the teal and then come back and do the moss. So the teal is on your right hand side if the leaves are facing you. So I'm going to fully load, working that color into it and then kind of patting it. Make sure you don't have any water on the ferrule and then just kind of achieving a point. Okay, so we're going to do the left side and always start in the middle when you have something like this and then work yourself out because that way you won't set your hand possibly in the design. So we're just doing a press. It's almost like a pointed pressure stroke. So you press and pull a little ways, press down, and then come back off. Always reload for each stroke, in this case, because of the enamels. Okay, so you're going to get just a nice point, and then pressure, pull, and lift off to a point. Ready? Point, press, pull, slightly turn the bristles with your finger see that just slightly turn just a half of a turn to come off and get that point reload kind of get a point started point press pull and point I always paint larger than my pattern pattern is your guide so don't freak out and it all depends on the size brush how much pressure you're putting on there and how much paint you have on there. So a brush stroke is color, pressure, and motion. So we're slightly turning as we're doing this. So point, press, pull, and lift. Pointed pressure stroke. So it's like a comma with points at both ends. Ready? Point, press and pull and lift. Reload, point, press, pull, and lift. Now we're going to go out here and do these outside ones. Same thing, point, press, pull, and lift. Okay, and then I'm going to have to jump over here to do this side. And some are smaller, the smaller they are, less pressure makes smaller strokes, more pressure makes larger strokes. Okay, and just keep working around. Then I have the center area, that circle in the middle, is filled in with that. And just brush stroke it in. Make sure you're not putting your fingers or arms 
you're disturbing anything that you've already done. So just block it in. Nothing fancy. What I'm doing is trying to smooth it so I don't see uh, strokes. Okay. Now, you can see that it doesn't take much color, okay? So don't waste. You can always mix up more. Um, I happen to be painting multiple pieces, so... Okay, so then you can come back and load, rinse that color out, load with your moss green. Turn this around. And you're going to do the other side, the same stroke. Point, press, pull, and lift. 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 Okay, so I think you have that down. I'm going to finish these, and I'll be back. Okay, so our color is dry. So we're going to go back uh, and do our purples and blues again. Remember, dampen your brush, which I did. Blot out on the paper towel. Fully load with your purple. And I'm using a Taclon brush. You can use a sable. Corner load in the blue. Blend that slightly and work from the inside out. Keep your blue on the same side. And you're doing a press, pull, and come off to the point. So it's almost like doing a comma stroke with a square shader. And I think on this second coat of the petals, it's very important that you load for every stroke. Don't cheat like we did on some of the first ones, because you're going to get a more intense color, unless you just like faded softer. And they're going to be fairly soft as it is, but this will reinforce that color to assure that you can see it well. Press, pull, slide off to a point. So press, slightly turn, and come off to a point. Press, turn, come off to a point. Press, turn, come off to a point. I finish these up and I'll be so back. With your teal, you're in your liner brush, whatever your favorite liner is. You're going to come in slightly thin the teal if you need to after it sits for a while it does thicken up and pull in your stems and your border design Okay, be sure to rinse your brush well. Okay, so what we want to do now is put in the calic, the area that holds all those flower petals together. We're going to start by just filling in one coat with your um, moss green, and then you'll have two small comma strokes on top when it's dry with the teal, and then we'll do our detailing after that. Okay, let's see if we've got enough here. What's wrong? Moss. 
So moisten your brush. I'm going to use the round brush to fill those in. And you can almost do a couple little comma strokes. And you may or may not, uh, you may need a couple of coats in this area. Just keep in mind you are going to put um, the teal on top of it. Don't forget, you have a little bud there that just needs, just tap it on there. Keep your finger out of anything that's wet. Okay, so we're going to add uh, with a number two Kalinsky round. I'm going to add those two comma strokes on that calic to finish those off. And I ended up only doing the one coat of the moss green underneath. Um, you could have put two coats there if you wish to. Just depends on how dark you want it. So you just press, pull, lift, press, pull, lift. So it's making like a little heart shape uh, on that calyx. And it also, you're bringing those strokes down to the stem because your stem is the teal color and that kind of ties everything together. Okay, you have... Um, a ring of purple so I'm just going to go ahead and use that same uh, round brush and apply one good coat it's a little thin you may want a couple of coats on this so let it dry and then come back in and apply a second coat Okay, so now um, you need to let those dry, and then we've got the blue stroke that's right in the center of each one of those petals, right close to that stem area. So you're doing that with the sapphire blue, and I'm still continuing to use that uh, number two round. And for this one, you could do two two coats also that would be up to you how dark you want just be sure and load for each stroke just so you have the same intensity of color it's just a comma press pull lift you're just kind of tucking that in towards that calyx
press pull lift just a small little comma stroke right in the center of each of those petals tucking it up next to the calyx Okay, so now with the purple or whatever color you want to use, we're going to add these accent dots around the border. And I'm using the dot maker. This is number five, which is the largest one. And I'm just going to pick up some of the color. And when you load it and keep dotting, then what happens, <coughs> excuse me, is you get graduated dots meaning they go from large to small. <clears throat> if you load every time, then you will get the same size dots. So that's a way to achieve a pattern. Okay, so like that, you have graduated. You have different size dots because you have less on the tool every time you dot it you're removing some of it so there's less on there therefore it's a smaller dot so continue to do those they're all around uh, between the petals and some accents you can add as many as you want that one didn't have enough and then we'll be back Okay, now what I've done is mix up some gold sparkle with the layering mix again, and then you'll want to thin it down slightly as you work. And I'm using um, a Zero Kalinsky liner that we have. You can use a Taclon liner if you want. Um, anything will work that way. Now this one is wet, so I'm going to grab this one. And what you're going to do is you're going to outline basically everything very loose and then you can come back and you can add dots if you want to or not uh, but everything needs to be outlined to give it kind of that cloisonne type look okay and even to the point that like down one side of your vein and then come up and just give it a very loose outline. Wave it, kind of give it some character. Doesn't have to be exactly what you've got as far as your stroke. It can be outside that, inside it. Just a general outline. Kind of make it ruffly like a flower petal would be. Okay, and then you'll want to do your center vein of your leaves. And then I'm just going to wave that a little bit. And you can see that um, when you come out onto the glaze itself, it gets thin. So if you can stay on top of 
your already painted areas, you're going to have a stronger outline. Okay. And just keep adding your detail down one side, up that vein. And I'm loading often because you're taking so much off the brush to do your detailing. You need to continually load that brush so that you have enough product on there to do your outline and your detail. All right, I will finish this and I'll be back. Okay, so now you need to go in and add some accents with the gold, with some dots. And it's just pretty much wherever you uh, want to put them. As you can see here on this one, I added them on top of the little blue comma stroke. I think you can see that. There you go. Okay, so to your liking, depends on how much you want. Um, I started at the end and let them get smaller as they go down towards the stem. So these are graduated dots. I'm only loading once and then doing three touches of the tool to the piece. Okay, so you can add that, add any of them wherever you want. Be creative. Okay, if you wanted to, um, you could add dots in the background uh, with the handle of a paintbrush. That makes a little bit larger dot, so on this particular one, uh, let's add some.
Okay, so um, you would stilt this and fire to an 015, 016. You can even go a little bit hotter. Uh, a normal fire full fuse for the enamels on glass is up to 1440 for system 96, and then it's going to be hotter for system 90 or for 90, bullseye 90. So um, you could use either one of those programs if you have a glass kiln. Just put it on stilts. Stilts are the ones with the little tiny pins in them and basically you're putting it underneath. You can see the marks on this one. It had a triangle in the glaze firing. So you would put them back on that and fire this into the glaze. If you're in a glass kiln, you would uh, take it to your full fuse. You could go 350 per hour up to the 1440, hold for 20 minutes, and then bring it down to a kneel time. Go ahead and bring it to 950, and then it can be pretty much shut off. Um, and like I said, if you're in just a regular ceramic kiln, then you're going to go 015, 016. You might be able to go a little bit hotter. I'll have a firing schedule at the end of the video for you. Alright, thank you for joining me.